So today I'm going to talk about chronic illness. I'm going to talk about my chronic illness and how it affects my life as well as how I manage it. Um, so I'll get right into it. I have ME, which is myalgic encephalomyelitis. It took me a while to learn how to say that. Um, it's also known as chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, it's only recently been recognised as a like a proper physical illness. It used to be treated as psychological. This is probably due to the fact that um, 80 to 90% of the people who suffer with ME are female and therefore have been treated not very well because in the past, obviously a lot of the time women were treated as hysterical or that they were experiencing symptoms all in their head and kind of making it all up or um, that it was down to stress or anxiety or something like that. Um, so, and, and, e and even um, in some cases people have been institutionalized because of it, but it has now been recognized as an actual illness, physical illness. Um, the symptoms that I experience might be different to other people. I sit on the mild end of the spectrum, which is hilarious in a way because it's one of the only illnesses or um, kind of chronic illnesses like ME and similar. They are the illnesses where the mild end is actually hugely disruptive to your life. Um, the scale of it can range from experiencing very mild symptoms, um, which I don't have, but like some people are milder than me. Um, but but relatively my symptoms are mild compared to the other end of the spectrum where some people are actually bed bound, can't feed themselves um, and can't move and can't experience noise and sensations and stuff so um actually what i'm experiencing is very mild compared to them but compared to a healthy person my life is very much disrupted and affected by my illness so the symptoms that i personally experience um i mean with everybody with emmy will experience fatigue um but it's not fatigue like just it's not just feeling tired it's not like you haven't slept well for a week it is like it is like your blood is poisoned, like it's tar, like it's weighing you down. Your whole body feels like lead. It feels like a sickness in your blood. It's really hard to explain. Um, another symptom that goes alongside that is a kind of general feeling of feeling really unwell. So that's kind of um, a little bit more easy to explain. It's kind of like the flu when you feel like super run down and really sicky and your whole body just feels like it's really unwell. Um, that's kind of what it feels like. Um, I get nausea on and off, uh, heart palpitations. Um, sometimes I get chest pains or like a feeling of like heaviness which sits about here. And that's when I'm like tired and I can f it feels like it's kind of, oh, like all the energy is gone from me. Um, I have stomach issues like IBS, um, so I have a really sensitive stomach. Um, temperature dysregulation is one of the symptoms that a lot of people don't actually know about. Um, so I can be really hot and not cool down for a really long time. I can get like super sweaty and I just can't cool down and other times I am freezing and I cannot warm up. I'm generally a lot of the time too hot or too cold in some way. Um, brain fog is another one, like you just feel like you can't think properly, it's like your thoughts are wading through mud, you're like just trying to think properly and you can't. Um, feeling faint is something that I get, I feel a bit kind of lightheaded and spaced out and not really with it. Um, um, the other one I get is a not so much, but I also get kind of a brain ache. It's like almost a headache, like I do get headaches sometimes, but it's like a brain ache, like I just feel tired up in my head. Um, and, and the other one is pain. Now I don't, I'm not really sure if my pain is linked 
to ME, my doctor thinks that it could be exacerbated by it. But I have issues with my back, but I get a lot of pain like all throughout my spine um, and also in my ribs. Um, and I'm basically in pain every single day. My doctor thinks it probably is due to ME, but I also have problems with my back as well. So it's kind of both together. Um, I'm not sure. I think I experience less pain than other people with ME. Um, but yeah, the, my back pain is sometimes completely overwhelming. Um, so how does it affect me in my life? Um, I can't work full time. I work 22 and a half hours a week, so I just work three shifts. Um, a lot of people with ME can't work at all. Um, so I'm lucky to be able to work that much, but it's still a real struggle because, you know, it, it means not having very much money and I also rely on Josh to give me some money every month to cover bills and living and stuff so it's not I'm not earning enough if I wasn't in a relationship it would be very difficult for me um, I don't really know what I'd do actually if I wasn't in a relationship to be honest I'd probably be living with my parents which would suck um, it means that my entire life is kind of revolved around um, managing my symptoms so I am generally like a few days before I go I have I'm due to work I'm always resting so basically I so I work three shifts a week and one of them is a Wednesday Thursday Friday and then I get six days off and so the first few days are kind of the the only days where I really have a freedom to to actually do stuff that I like because then I have to rest before going back to work on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the following week. Um, and it's kind of, it's not great because I've just worked three days and then I have these six days off. And so I spend the first few days basically doing what I want to do, which actually isn't great because at that period of time I need to be resting. But those are those those are the only days that I can really do what I want to do, so I do it anyway. And then I spend the next few days resting, and then I'm back to work, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then I have a Monday, Tuesday off, and then I'm back to the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday again, which is that first week that I said. And those two days are pretty much spent resting because they're in between three shifts and three shifts. So I spend most of my time managing, managing being able to work. So it's really frustrating and it's also very anxiety provoking. I have a very high absence record. Um, and so that's very anxiety provoking because I'm always kind of worried about my job and whether I'll lose it. And you know, you never know when you're gonna be ill and you never know how long you're gonna be ill for. And that's very anxiety provoking whilst having a job. So I'm pretty anxious like a lot of the time and I'm quite stressed a lot of the time, but it's, yeah, it's kind of hard because a lot of the time I can't do what I want to do. I'm very confined by my illness. Um, but, you know, again, it's not as bad as other people's. So in that way, I am blessed. But compared to, you know, normal, healthy people, um, I'm not. And my whole life is kind of run by my illness. Not to the, not to the extent that people with more severe symptoms are. Because a lot of people are housebound or bedbound. Um, and can't work. So, you know, I do recognise that, that I have those privileges but it's really really hard um having your, your kind of like your whole life dictated to by this illness it also means that josh has to do a lot more um around the house sometimes and that can be quite frustrating for him and you know that can be something that that can cause issues sometimes um a little bit of resentment maybe um which i think is normal because that's just what happens and it's about talking about it. Um, so how I manage it is called pacing. It means you pace yourself and you work out like how much energy you have to be able to spend each day. And it's you try and work out what you can do without crashing. Now I'm not very good at doing this and a lot of people aren't because you get frustrated and you wanna do what you wanna do. And then when you do what you wanna do, you end up having a flare up of symptoms and crashing. And that's the thing that you've gotta try and avoid, but it's really, really hard to do. So it's about like pacing and making sure you are not overdoing it every single day and you always have the same amount of energy spent and you stay on an even keel then. But that's not always possible to do. Um, so that become really frustrating. Um, so yeah, 
that's that's kind of what it's like for me um I'm as, as I said I'm definitely not very good at keeping within that kind of energy envelope as it were I've seen it described as an energy envelope and you're meant to stay within it and not go without outside of it and that's the way that you should manage it that's the way you should manage symptoms and and for um a lot of chronic illnesses it's kind of the same um but it's really frustrating because I am an active person and I like to be an active person and it's really really difficult when you can't do that swimming was one of the main things that I really enjoyed and I'm a very good swimmer so I used to swim like 50 lengths in half an hour I'm a fast swimmer I'm a good swimmer and it's something that is now not sustainable for me to do um which is really disappointing because it's something that I really enjoy um yeah and I used to do a lot of other activity but when you have Emmy you can't really do stuff that is um aerobic or anaerobic because it draws on reserves that you don't have um so you can do cardio like walking and stuff I mean th this depends on who you are um a lot of people can't do walking but for, but for some people like it's easier to do smaller exercises so some people can do walking or some people can do yoga some people can do some pilates or stuff like that but but I would say I don't really know anybody with ME that can do aerobic exercises, going to the gym, going swimming, going running, anything like that. Um, and then there are some people that really can't do anything apart from light stretches um, and maybe some um, lifting exercises. Um, so it really depends on the person. But I, yeah, I ha as I said, I haven't met anybody with ME who is actually able to... Um, do really intense physical activity and that that's really frustrating for me um but yeah and it also means that if if I've got something planned then I have to be really really careful what I do around it and that also gets really frustrating so for example going to work or for example me and Josh went to Chester Zoo a couple of months ago and we were going to be walking around the zoo and walking around the zoo I mean took six hours and we did a hell of a lot of steps in that day and I knew that I had to be really careful about what I was doing around those, those, those things I always have to be careful about things when I really want to go and do something the days before I have to kind of prep for it but I can get quite frustrated and then go out and go for a walk anyway and kind of sabotage myself but just because I'm so frustrated of being controlled by it so it's really really difficult because it's not just the physical symptoms that you have to deal with it's it's all the mental stuff like the the mourning for your old life and the stress and the anxiety that comes with responsibilities uh, you know work being the biggest one if you can work and secondly kind of friendships and maintaining relationships because you can't be the same person that you were and you often have to rely on friends to come to you instead of you going to them and some friends aren't willing to do that um especially not all the time and luckily I have a lot of friends that are wonderful fantastic friends that pretty much always come to my house and um you know Josh he always does the driving he does stuff when I'm tired he looks after me um so do my friends um but it's it creates more anxiety and stress because you know that people are doing more than you are and it can cause a lot of guilt um, and anxiety that people might be annoyed at you so and yeah there's the frustration again as well of not being able to do what you want to do and um, I mean there's just a lot of a lot of emotions um, depression can easily happen when you have a chronic illness because of the way that it controls your life and limits your life um you know i can't go out for a club night or anything now it just isn't feasible for me to do i used to go clubbing all the time when i was younger i mean it's not necessarily something that i enjoy doing now anyway because i don't really drink but you know that option isn't there if my friends want to go out for a night out i can't go for a club night in a city that's i mean you know one of the closest cities to me is bristol and a lot of my friends live in Bristol and then if they want to go out and 
do something, go for club night. It's just too far away for me to... I can't just leave the club when I'm tired and go home and go to sleep because I can't actually get home from there. Um, so it is, it is, it is frustrating. Um, and I don't think a lot of people really grasp that. And a lot of people can compare their tiredness to yours and they, that's just not appropriate either. That's um, because people don't know what your tiredness is unless they have a chronic illness, you just don't know what it, it is like to feel like this in your body. Um, but yeah, generally on the whole, people have been really good. Um, I think the, the I actually haven't experienced, I have experienced some discrimination, but um, on the whole, a lot of the time, people are really, really good. And the only thing that kind of grates on me is when people do compare their tiredness to mine, I'll be like, God, I'm so tired and I'm not feeling great today. Um, and they know what I mean by that, and then they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm so tired too, like, I know what you mean, I'm like, no you don't, shut up, but no, um, also at other times it's, I also, also other people are like, oh, I don't want to compare my tiredness to you, and I'm like, oh, it's okay, you're tired too, that's fine, it's a different kind of tired, different levels of tiredness, but we all feel tired, so, you know, that's fine. Um, this video has gone on way longer than I expected it to. But yeah, I hope that that has given you some kind of insight into chronic illness as a whole and specifically my chronic illness and how I cope with it, how I live with it, how it feels for me. Um, and therefore might give you a little bit of an idea of how it feels for other people. Um, but as I said, bear in mind that mine is more on the milder spectrum than other people's. So um, my experience is slightly more positive than some people's, but very different from healthy people. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped in some way for some people. <laughs>